Hello world and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. Today's video we are going to talk about single table design in DynamoDB, what it is, what benefits it brings and when you should not use it. So let's get started. I want to start this video with my story with Dynamo because it was quite an interesting ride. I started using Dynamo in 2000 something, like seven years ago. I think 2016, 17, somewhere there. My first encounter with Dynamo was on serverless migration. So we were migrating an existing application that existed in the world, it has users, into serverless. One of the serverless components was Dynamo. We were migrating data from Postgres and React, that is a database, I don't know if it exists anymore, but it was a NoSQL database into DynamoDB. I knew nothing about Dynamo by that time. I knew about React, I knew about Postgres, and basically my assumption was when I started working with Dynamo, that one Dynamo table was one table from a relational database or like a big document, and I was wrong. I did the migration, I was using so many tables and my code because of that was so complicated. But I managed to get something done. In November 2017, after reInvent, I watched the talks. I went to YouTube and I started watching some of the talks. And one of the talks made my brain explode like... It was a talk from Rick Hulihan. He was working with Dynamo by then and he explained the concept of single table design. By that time in that video, it didn't have that name, but basically I watched that video, my brain exploded, then I put the pieces back together, I watch it again and I watch it again and I watch it again. And then with that information, I tried to rework my tables my Dynamo approach and try to build a new version of that migrated app that was simpler. In that video, I learned the concept of analyzing the access patterns and single table design. So after putting all the code together and coding like a crazy person, I went and got a proper version of my migrated app. It was so nice to work this migration and to see how my application improves its performance and improve the code and the code readability and things like that. And you might be wondering why that happened, why I was doing it wrong and why the concept of single table design helped me out. So let's go one step back and understand a little bit what is the concept of a single table design. Basically, single table design is a way to store content, to store data in DynamoDB. If you come from a relational world, you might think about data normalization. And that makes sense a lot when we were talking about storage problems that we had in the old times when storage was expensive and hard. But basically you were using these normalized tables with minimal amount of data and you were joining them together. Relational tables had a lot of power built in into joining tables. Dynamo doesn't allow you to do joins. And that's the biggest thing when you are thinking about Dynamo tables as relational tables. Because Dynamo doesn't allow you to do these joins, you end up doing the joins in your code. And that makes your code very complicated. So when you're working with Dynamo, imagine that you have a shopping cart from an e-commerce, you will fetch the user and then get the shopping cart ID, and then you're going to the shopping cart tables and you're going to get the cart for that particular user with all the contents. So you're doing two queries. Well, in the old school, you can basically just join the two data together and do one request to the database if you have joins, but you have, don't. So what is the solution to not having joins in Dynamo. The solution is to prepare your data 
for those queries. You need to prepare your data beforehand. So one of the biggest challenges when adopting Dynamo, a lot of developers have is when I tell them like, hey, you need to know your access patterns. You need to prepare your data for those access patterns. And a lot of people say, oh my God, I need to have the, all the use case beforehand and I will not never be able to change my data again. And I was like, don't panic. <laughs> there is always ways to modify your table after you have committed to the single table design. So no panic. The application can change. Don't panic. But you still need your access patterns in order to design this table. So going back to the single table design and the e-commerce, how it should look when you have designed this table in order to serve your access patterns. Now, when you want to get the information from the shopping cart from a user, you just search the user information and you will get all the information from the shopping cart. No need to do two queries as you will do in a relational database. So the idea is to reduce the amount of Dynamo queries to as little as you can, ideally only one per access pattern. So, well, Marcia, <laughs> you might be saying that sounds lovely, but I'm pretty sure there is some downsides of doing this. Yeah. The first one, as I said, is knowing all the access patterns beforehand. You need to get those. You need to do the work. You need to understand what you're building. And I think it's a good practice as well when you're building a relational database. It's not just throwing things into coconuts. Like you always have to do some entity relation map. You need to normalize the data. So Dynamo is not different than that. Also, with the single table design, there is the learning curve. The learning curve, you need to learn it. As you learn, normalize data and all those old people that went to school and did databases classes where you have to do normalize data will back me in there. It takes a lot of time to learn how to denormalize data and normalize data and put things in tables in relational database. It takes also time to learn the single table design. And other downsides is that it's not the most friendly table to read. So when you open a single table design, you'll find a lot of information there. It's hard to know what is going on. There is a lot of kind of cryptic things here and there, but well, this table is not designed for you. It's designed for Dynamo to be able to retrieve data faster so your applications can understand. So it's like code language. It's not human language, let's put it like that. So you might be wondering when not to use a single table design. There is two scenarios. The first scenario is for those developers that don't know their access patterns. I know, Marcia, you just told me I need to know the access pattern, but let's be realistic. There is many people that are start building code without knowing the access patterns. You just start building something, you throw it in a table, you pray to the gods. And that's a quite normal thing. So if you're in that situation, what will happen is that basically you're going to spend a lot of cycle times just doing operations into Dynamo and application and then Dynamo and then application and showings in your application, your code will be more complicated, your tests will be more complicated and everything. So let's look, go back to the example about the shopping cart. And now imagine that you don't have the single table design. You are going to fetch the user. You are going to add that to, I don't know, 10 milliseconds of response time. Then you're going to fetch the shopping cart. You're going to do a round trip of 10 milliseconds. I know fast, you know that. Then you might spend like 50, 60 milliseconds trying to figure out the application code. And that will end up maybe to 100 milliseconds in the time that you reply back. That could be a 10 milli request, as simple as that. So you're making it 10 times slower just because you don't have the single table design. Also, you're adding a lot of complexity in that function that you will need to build tests around and you will need to support that code because code is a liability. We all know that. So by not doing the single table design, you're adding a lot of technical depth and a lot of performance problems into your application. If you're willing to take that risk because you are in that mood that you need to develop the application fast and you want to get there fast and you don't have the access pattern because you are building as you go, take that risk 
but know the risks. The second case where you will not use the single table design if you're using GraphQL. GraphQL is a way to do, as we have GraphQL endpoints, so you can fetch data from different data sources and you have an implementation with GraphQL. For example, if you're using AWS, you might have AppSync. And when you have this a GraphQL implementation, usually each GraphQL type is associated with a different data source. In here we can have each GraphQL type associated with a different Dynamo table and GraphQL will be the one doing the showing for you. So you don't need to do that. I will not get into the details. I will leave you a blog post that Alex Debris made on when to use why not to use GraphQL with a single table design. He goes in a lot of details and he talks a lot of single table designs. So I will leave you the link there. And if you want to get started with single table design and you want to know all steps that you need to follow, I have done an interview with Alex Debris where you will go step by step into all the things that you need to do in order to get started with single table design. So I would recommend you to go and check that one out. In a nutshell, I can tell you that there is four steps that you need to do in order to get started with single table design. First one, you need to create an entity relation up diagram. You need to understand all your entities in your application and how they relate to each other. Then you need to find your access patterns and write them down. Then you will need to model your primary key and sort key and all those things, how they are going to structure and how they are going to look. And then you will create your indexes and everything around uh, solving those access patterns. I will not go into each of the steps like theoretically, because we already have covered that with Alex Debris. But in following videos in this series, we are going to see a practical use case solving a migration and how we can tackle this for and how we can build a single table design. So stay tuned and subscribe for that. One thing that I want to make sure that you understand before we end this video. Single table design is great, but everything still under the concept of data ownership. When we are looking at single table design, we are talking about applications, but I want to be clear, we are talking about microservices. One application can be one microservice or it can be two or 20 or who knows what many. So what I want to say is that one single table per microservice, because if not, you are going to have data leaking around and we don't want that. We want the data to be within the microservice. You want to own that data and you want to own the access to that data. In that way, you can control the access patterns because you will have built interfaces between the outside and your data and you know how to access the data. If you let your data source open to the world, first everybody can do whatever in your data source and you're coupling your applications through your data source and you don't want that. And also you don't know your access patterns. So always build this kind of concept of microservices, a single table design, and then each microservice connects between each other through some kind of pattern of decoupling. If you want to learn more about coupling and decoupling microservices, I recommend you check the event-driven playlist I have where you can learn more about microservices architecture. And with that said, this is the video for today. I hope you enjoy it. There is more parts coming up in this Dynamo series where we are going to build this migration. We are going to migrate something that is not in Dynamo into Dynamo and we are continuing that next week. So you can find the playlist in here. It's listed for you so you can check what videos have been published. And if you're watching this in the future, find the videos that were published after this one. And I also leave you here the video for Alex Debris when we chat about single table design that you can go and watch now. And with that say, thank you for watching and I see you in another episode of Fuba. Ciao, ciao.